I hope everyone is fine in this second wave of COVID-19. Initially, I would like to request you all to get yourself vaccinated if you are especially above the age of 45. And if not, maintain a social distancing and wear your mask definitely. So guys, today I have done some of the special edition. I'm featuring myself for the first time into my videos and I hope you will like this a lot and support it to a many million turns. If yes, please do like, subscribe, comment in the comments box section and press the bell icon for the continuous notification. Now, many of the students would requesting me to provide the notes for specifically 8th semester B pharmacy while I'm well versed with all of this section, I would request all the B Pharmacy and M Pharmacy student to get themselves commented in the comment box section for any subjects of the notes, any semesters of the counseling or any help that you need from me. Or you can just contact me on my mail ID. You can just note it down. That is aishashukla 644 at the gmail.com. If you have not noted it down, reverse the video and copy it or I'll just give it in the description. Now, today's video is basically on the three things. This vaccination period is going on. Why? What are the things that it takes a lot of time to get itself approval from various organizations? So that is the testing. So now in this drugs and testing, there are three basic criteria that you need to understand. That is what is in vitro initially, second one what is in vivo and the third one is ex vivo. So these are the three things that you need to understand and how they correlate to each other. So let's get started with this video. Before that, don't forget to subscribe my channel and like my video. Let's get started. Yeah, so here is the video of in vitro, in vivo and ex vivo studies. So these were the three things which I was talking about in my sessions to be revealed. Ye teen cheeze itni easy hai that these are going to help you in many of your concepts building. The things which I have included in my presentation are here enlisted in the 13 to 14 points. The basic introduction. The in vitro screening method and what are the challenges we are going to face in this testing. Aap logo ko in vitro and in vivo would be very easy to understand but now ex vivo is something new. Or ex vivo is a thing that many of you must not be heard about. So let's go. IV, IVC is very easy. So these are the points at the end of the session. I'm definitely sure you are going to be very well known and understood with these topics. The basic introduction. So what is the basic introduction of uh, the first topic that is in vitro? Whenever something we are dealing in human tissues, cell line or cellular components and these components are outside the body. ठीक है ये आउटसाइड द बॉडी होता है इन द सपोर्ट ऑफ द एक्वस मीडिया हम जो प्रिपेयर करते हैं मीडिया ये कभी भी इन विट्रो स्टडीज आर नॉट इनसाइड द बॉडी दे आर ऑलवेज आउटसाइड द बॉडी हम टिश्यू सेल लाइनिंग को एक्सट्रैक्ट करते हैं एंड देन वहां से उसका मीडिया प्रिपेयर करके उसमें हम हमारी टेस्टिंग करते हैं सो इन वीवो फार्माकोलॉजी इज द स्टडी ऑफ द बायोलॉजिकल इफेक्ट सो दीज are also concentrated and mainly concentrated on the biological effects and this is basically a you can say a simil, simple similar step of testing what is ex vivo the thing which i was talking about you must not be aware with these kinds of thing so ex vivo is an experimentation this is the experimentation on particular whole organ like heart liver and this is heart liver or any organ is maintained outside the body but proper circulation its living state is maintained okay so the external environment hum alteration karte hain natural condition ka under the controlled condition it is somehow similar to in vivo and in vitro it is a middle of them so we are altering the natural environment complete organ pe testing hoti hai 
in vitro screening methods so what are the key consideration so the key consideration could include pharmacological or toxicological screening methods so this is a basically used for novel entities the novel drug delivery system just ke bare mein you must have heard about now in the recent year purification or identification is very important for all the micromolecules so we use the in vitro studies for what we use it for the physical techniques yes now and for the use it could be in the dna enzyme testing target you must have heard about cad computer aided drug selection and design so this is very important this is a computational technique which is going to help us in know the entity or molecule yeah so typically in vitro methods can be used to ask very certain questions and this certain questions is always based upon inter organ level now what is the screen for the pharmacological activity when we are screening for the in vitro pharmacological activity we need to look about the therapeutic advantages yes and what are the mechanistic studies we should go under now this is going to help us in the drug discovery in the development in vitro methods will continue to provide both novel leads and high throughput screens yes but this is also used in analyzing the sar that is structural activity relationship of any molecule basically you study this in medicinal chemistry now screen for the toxicological activity like you must have about hepatotoxic nephrotoxic neurotoxic so what is this toxicology so this toxicological studies is just based upon the screen for toxicological activities the toxicological endpoint need to be specific and discarded a multi vitro screen for cytotoxicity target or target organ toxicity have been developed yes so we can use it in nephrotoxic neurotoxic and point to point or you can say end to end toxicological studies and we always get a false positive result if the drug is not suitable a large number of in vitro system is being used yes including the whole embryo culture like of the rat mouse chick fish and all of this so microculture is being used embryonic midbrain of several cell linings are also being used for the testing in this sections and by the selection of in vivo testing we need to look for the in vitro tetragenosity now tetragenosity would be a very new word to all of you i would really like to go to the google and ask what is tetragenosity if you don't know this is very exciting okay this is a kind of toxicity so what are the limitation why we cannot use the in vitro methods so this can be artifactual artifactual means these are relatively static they they can give you the inappropriate drug concentration sometimes these are not more precise as compared to in vivo that's why we need to perform both the studies that is in vitro or in vivo and if if in vivo is not possible we are going to perform the ex vivo studies correct the target may be low novelty so the novelty of the novel drug delivery system could not be easy like if i take the example of a prostaglandin inhibitor so it is blocked by beta adrenoreceptors and it is it also inhibit the non adrenaline uptake so we are not able to analyze what it is working upon is it working upon beta adrenoreceptors or non adrenaline yes now there are further advantages biokinetics advantages 5ht blockers where you going to find the utility of the in vitro and in vivo studies what are the challenges the three basic challenges that we are going to face in the novel drug delivery system whatever i am talking about jo bhi main aapko is video mein bata rahi hu this is all based upon novel drug relief system so these are the three disadvantages why we cannot use the in vitro studies in the case of novel drug relief system the first one is particle size the second one is zeta potential and third one is stability now these are the disadvantages in detail you can study and if you want this ppt you can just ask me for i'll mail you it over so what is the in vivo studies 
in vivo is something inside the body it is not outside it is inside the body and the testing or the result are being seen after a period of time like if we give a particular parenteral so we are going to see what are the you can say effects yes so this is a positive preclinical result and around 30% of drug candidates fail in the human clinical trial so this is what i was telling about vaccine development is not so easy because it needs so much of approval just because of the in vivo studies and their adverse effect the most common used preclinical models are of the rat and mice or the non rodents it could be rodents that is rat mice and gu guinea pig and it could be non rodents that is dog human primates pigs rabbits and all of them so all the pharmacokinetic studies should be uh, evaluated according to validated procedure like we should know for the in vitro studies initially hame pata hona chahiye what are the weight age group different age group breeds number of animals in number of animals it is young adult or neonate we need to specify and we need to test on every test group yes so primary studies and preliminary studies both are performed so ndds can be evaluated by intravenous intraperitoneal buccal oral sublingual and intratracheal and intranasal activities in that we are going to evaluate in vitro and in vivo the basic differences here comes we are going to evaluate the bioavailability and bioavailability fraction in in vivo so the bioavailability or bioavailable fraction is a very common term you must all be aware with and in this bioavailability we have two things absolute bioavailability and relative bioavailability the absolute bioavailability is a systematic availability of a drug administered orally and it is basically intravenous so here is the formula from where you can find out the absolute bioavailability that is area under the curve of oral upon area under the curve of intravenous dorsal relative viability is different how what we are going to we are going to do uh, give it orally okay so we are going to just give it orally not intravenous is given as compared to relative comparison of test and standard this is a curve in which you can go, we are going to analyze the maximum therapeutic effect and minimum effective concentration mtc and mec and this therapeutic range is going to tell you where the drug is working for and if it is less than mec it's not going to see the effect if it is more than mtc it's going to create the toxicity what is the advantages what are the ways of measurement of viability this is basically the pharmacokinetic methods and pharmacodynamic methods in pharmacokinetic methods aap jaise dekh sakte hain there are two classification this c max concentration maximum t max area under the curve and if we are going to analyze the urinary excretion studies so urinary test hote in the laboratories so these are basically dxu by dt this is kind of differentiation a small quantity is being analyzed while in the pharmacodynamic methods we are going to analyze the pharmacological response or therapeutic response now the last part of my presentation is ex vivo studies so this is the last section and this is very uncommon to all of you so please do concentrate here ex vivo is generally the experimentation or measurement that is outside the body but a complete organ tissue is being mimicked naturally yeah so we are going to what we are going to do we are going to provide the controlled condition for the intact organism and altering the natural environment and this ability test us to perform if the ethical committee is not allowing us for the in vivo test so the example of ex vivo test recently is finding the cancer treatment agent yeah we are using it for the cancer treatment agent we are going to analyze the physical chemical and mechanical and optical property of life sustaining drugs yes it's going to be more realistic approach than the surgical development it is going to be interaction of different types of energies and tissue here are the a b c as you can see there are the three machine yeah the first one is for the lungs the second one is for the intestine and third one is for the liver so these are the ex vivo matrix technology and these kind of technology has been used for the testing the complete organ is removed and the testing is performed on that perfusion technology the second name for ex vivo matrix technology 
so here are the acceptance criteria what are the dosing routine how we can take the sample for the lungs liver and intestine why i am telling you three basic because these are being more encountered now what is in vitro and in vivo correlation iv ivc this is very common thing we are not going to study the ex vivo relation more common and this iv ivc is basically defined by us fda so it's going to tell you the relation between in vivo and in vitro studies and these are going to compare the plasma drug concentration and this result is going to be more effective than a single result so here we are going to see the biopharmaceutical factor and physiological factor what are the further approaches this is generally used for the prediction of the entire in vivo concentration and in vitro dissolution profile so two things are there if we'll do it singly hum ek hi cheez perform karenge and we are performing two things and then we are comparing so this is iv ivc in that also we have level a b and c for the more detailed iv ivc model i can make a another video for you guys if you need that you can just tell me in the comment box section so level c and level a and level b is going to tell you how the correlation or multiple correlation is going to work in this kind of studies these are the graphs which i going to see for the in iv ivc level a level b and level c in vitro ex vivo correlation very rare you are not going to find this kind of topic anywhere that is my bet so that is in vitro ex vivo correlation now in this in vitro ex vivo correlation a transcorneal drug permeation is being being performed i am taking the example okay so this q1 and q2 is the you can say quality quality study of the generic formulation qualitatively of q1 and qualitative concentration of inactive ingredients and active ingredients is q2 and we are going to take the log of that and if the log is straight line more less than 0.98 then we are going to tell that this particular in vitro ex vivo correlation is not going to hold good these are the references from where i have took my this presentation more of if you need further explanation over that i'm uh, going to give you for that thanks a lot guys for watching my video don't forget to like it subscribe it and press the bell icon because i need your support and soon i'm going to provide you the videos on particular topic from every semester Thanks a lot guys tara